So this is Charles Graham here uh, with NPR host David Green. Uh, so thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. So you've been here in Iowa a little bit. You've got to speak to some of the candidates. Can you tell me what their mood is going into this Iowa caucus? Uh, are they optimistic or have they given up hope? The candidates, it's hard to find a candidate who will say, I am pessimistic, this is just not going to happen. This is a long, long presidential campaign, and um, a lot of candidates will start having to decide if and when it's time you know, to get out, and, and that'll, be, that'll be a big decision. Just a couple more questions. So many people have different things that they see as the biggest issues in this country. Um, do you think that for you personally and for America, do you think that the candidates that are running have focused on those issues? I mean, we've heard stuff about national security, immigration laws, um, but do you think that they could expand a little bit more, or do you think that they've sort of targeted all the, the primary issues in this country? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer you this way, because when I got to Western Iowa um, to do some reporting a few days ago, I didn't feel like I totally got the depth of the anger and fear um, on the minds of a lot of people. And we were sitting down with voters who, you know, a group, and their biggest concerns, and, and these were, you know, this is a largely Republican conservative part of the state, their concerns were terrorism and fear for their families after seeing mass shootings in this country, and then guns. And they said that when President Obama you know, talked about gun control in, in response to some mass shootings, they felt like it was sort of a smack in the face. Like that's not, you know, that was a time when they felt they wanted to protect themselves potentially with guns and that they couldn't connect to the president. So a lot of anger and a lot of fear. Um, and so I don't know when, you know, is Donald Trump responding to that and capturing those voters? Is that the reason that, that he's seeing the numbers he is right now? Uh, you know, I'm not a pollster, but but certainly, you know, when you hear about fear and when you hear about anger, you go talk to voters in, in a lot of places like, you know, small towns in Western Iowa, and you, you feel it palpably. So why do you think that it's important for the younger generation to be involved in politics? I mean, I, it's not my position as a journalist to tell anyone what to do, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say young people should all be involved in politics. Um, if it's your dream to be president, I, I mean, you are an incredibly skilled and talented and smart person, I can tell already. And I could see you fulfilling that dream of being president in, 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 you know, when the time is right. So I love your passion for politics. One last question. With all the issues that we've, we've talked about, how do you in picture the future of our country within the next eight years or 16 years? A lot of the candidates talk about immediate changes that they'll make to solve the problems of our country. Uh, but we, we've seen that with the last three presidents that we've had, not all the problems can be solved. What do you think is realistic for our country, the, the problems that could potentially be solved? And what do you think is going to take a lot longer than some of the candidates are maybe saying? I, you know, I... I sat down with Clay Masters, who's the, the host of Morning Edition um, in Iowa, at Iowa Public Radio, and he said this morning that, uh, you know, four years ago, um, everyone talked about that politics was going to be much less polarizing, there was going to be a lot more common ground, and the parties were going to make much more of an effort to expand their, their base. And where have we come? We've come to an election that is, that is sort of as, as angry and, and partisan and polarizing as, as I think you know, you can, can remember in a way, um, so the predictions were wrong. Right now, you know, wouldn't it be nice if sort of we say that the, the country is so polarized and, and Congress can't get along with the president and blah, 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 and that we, we in four years are looking and saying, wow, the country really came together in a way that we didn't predict. Um, and that you look at the numbers and people saying, you know, do they believe in Washington? What is the approval rating for, you know, members of Congress? And, and they start to go up. I mean, that that would be something none of us are probably predicting right now, but that would be a cool thing. And I, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Thank you. Thank you so much Pleasure. for having this interview with me. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.